live from San Diego, California. It's our mid-season finale of our 64th season of America's Hottest Racing Series. This is Joe Racing 2018, Week 13's action. With your family all ready to kick off the summer season, Mr. Brandon Shining! Hello San Diego! Some of the partners, are you ready for our mid-season finale? Yes, we are! And I hope you pass off. Welcome to Week 13's action and our mid-season finale of our 64th season of Cow Racing 2018. Well, with so much just a few days away, we're ready to kick off another exciting summer season with us. With the golf folks here in San Diego, San Diego, California, and all of our 48 subscribers ready for another exciting race. This will be our tag team action, so it's possibly an exciting one. Paul, well, let's get things on the way with race number one. Alright, Brandon, let's start off our mid-season finale of Chow Racing 2018 with race number one, which will pit the days for us, Tommy and Kenny, against the Gunstar Star Master Gary Dayton and Holland Chain Master and Fun Kingsley. Some of the Chow have really struggled to get the wins, but F.I. Kingsway, he surely had a solid season so far, winning 8 of the 12 races prior to this week. Let's take a look at the lineup. As usual, our bases will be held on him, of course. And yes, this will be our tag team format for our mid-season finale this year. Let's see what happens here. Good luck to the first two teams on the quest for victory, and please start the race! And look at this, in an unexpected turn of events, Garrett Dayton and F. I. Kingsley are both going to rest, which means the Days Brothers, Tommy and Kenny, unexpectedly have the opening edge as, they, as the Days Brothers make their way towards the following trees. Well, I knew that Garrett Dayton and F. I. Kingsley will be both tired in a hurry. Now, now they have to make a lot of statement in the early run. Right now, Tommy and Days leads up in the front, with Kenny Days rapidly trying his best to catch up to his partner. And it looks like, what will Tommy Days be doing? It looks like Tommy Days is heading for the water. As it's for Kenny Days, wins the first opening toss of our mid-season finale of Chow Racing 2018. And right now, the Gotham Star Master Garrett Dayton is also heading for the water. Right now, number 7 is getting left behind the competition wall with number 1. And number 8 is last. That means number 8 will join number 7 for a duo all the way in the back of the pack. As number 2, who finds off with Kenny Days, takes Beavis number 2 of this opening race. By now it is Tommy Days. Uh oh! Looks like Evan Kingsley is getting revenge after forced being sleep at the beginning of the race, but now he's catching up to him in a hurry. What's gonna happen? What will be? What will? What will happen in the Racing universe? We'll soon know anyway. We want. And who will get the next command for us? It's gonna be number one, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then. Now he's trying to leave the other silver child and can't eat it us. We pass the one minute mark and number eight is possible one. So now he is gonna drop down the last place all the all way behind the back. As number two, we'll get a second speed bus on his face. He now leads over the four silver child in a hurry. And back of the front, Tommy Days is getting starting to get tailgating by the horn chain master F1 Kingsley. I knew F5 Kings we will find the rhythm soon enough. And his partner Garrett Dayton gets a turn now, trying to catch up to his partner and Tommy Days. Meanwhile, number seven, they are seems like they're getting left behind from Kenny Days. They're battling for D like all the way in the back. I think one of them has to get Beavers. I think it's gonna be number seven gets it. Yep, number seven got it. So he will be number eight in the dust. And right now, let's head back to the rivalry between F1 Kingsley and Tommy Days. And it looks like F1 Kingsley has took the lead, heading into the home stretch. They're both heading to the home stretch right now, as number 7 gets back to back speeders. And he will lead number 8 in us. And it looks like F1 Kingsley is going to hold on to the lead ahead of Big Cherry Tommy Days. So F1 Kingsley is going to prove to 9 and 4. And it's 13 races so far this year. As number two takes the next beamers. And from Kingsley, holds on Tommy Days to lift Garrett Dayton towards the midway. So now Garrett Dayton and F1 Kingsley are 3 and 1, and F1 Kingsley has won 9 out of 13 races so far for the first half of this season. Well done. As the last beamers on this race, we may my number 7, making a total of 3 beamers for this race. Tommy Days will come in second, and Garrett Dayton, who's smiling with a win, takes third place. 
Alright, FN Kingsway new in the hearts. He would have let his star season drop down. That's why he's now 9 and 4, and there's one something coming up for a mid season finale while Joey's in 2018. Wow, Paul, that was a surprising opening race. That's why I thought the Deepers would have control, but FN Kingsway proved them all. And thus they did the harm check all in the fans. That's right, very surprising indeed. But right now, let's proceed to race number two. That's right, race number two will feature last year's runner-ups, Don Reddings with Green. Don Reddings is our current world champion, as a matter of fact. Tonight, they'll be taking on a look at the hours, Stealing Man and Ramon Chante. We have the golden job for this race. Let's see how well they'll fare in this race. There's a look in the lineup, and let's head down to the field. Alright, so good luck to Don Reddings with Green on the look at for race number two of our mid-season finale this month. Everyone is on the clock, so without further ado, let's have a challenge! <clears throat> and they're off and running for these next two teams. Each of them has won two of the last three months, but only one of them will go up to 750. The other will have to drop down to 500. Who's going to prove the three and one? We'll find out soon enough. Right now on the free channel, we're going to eat the food, and there goes Stealing Man and Ram Marchante. And look at that. They're going to have the upper hand out to come when at least a two on one advantage as they head towards the water. They're both going to be flying the water, and it looks like Stealing Man is paying off his shortcut, and he paid off. So now he will have a command early up in the front, as the first of Star Gets Beepers is Luke Green, who's trying desperately to catch up over at the bridges. Stealing Man has the lead, but I think someone else took a shortcut. Yep, it's our defending champion, Don Menix. He also paid off his shortcut strategy. But right now, it is Stealing Man, Iron Savage Warrior, who has to come out of the ahead of Don Menix at the Sapphire Fortune, of course. As Beavis, number two in his face, we're made by number two, who leads number eight, and Luke Green in the dots, bowing for dear life. Don Menix better hurry up. He took a shortcut, but so did Stealing Man. He's trying desperately to catch up to Iron Spider's voice, the Wegman of the Lucky Arch. He doesn't want to spoil his fans. He doesn't want to let down his fans on spoiling a repeat title run for 2019. Anyway, who got the next command to be asked as we pass the one minute mark? It's Van Wan Shorte of the Lucky Arch. Meanwhile, Luke Green is getting left behind the competition. He's getting left behind for the others. And so is number eight. I think one of them needs to get a us at least. Which one will get a chance? It is number 8 who gets it. And now we pour Luke Green in the dust. Poor Luke Green getting like hard by number 8 after this. Yes. Anyways, Stealing Man has reached the top of the wall. And so it's all minutes. But which one of them will prevail on the whole stretch? We'll find out soon enough. As they make way past the wall forward and into the ruby portion of the course. Next PS blocks to Luke Green. That makes his second speedrun of the race. But he's still way behind the competition all the way back. Stealing Man uh, should have this race all around top, but Don Wayne starts to have enough flying power. And it looks like he's going to have a little bit of movement among more ahead of Don Wayne. So Stealing Man is going to whip Ray Watch on takes all the victory. Now, uh, someone takes the next few minutes, Don Wayne won't have another distance to catch up with Stealing Man on the Luck of the Irish in time. The Luck of the Irish is our winner, with Stealing Man coming in first place. That makes eight wins for Irish Man for Stealing Man. Seven wins for Memoir Trontay. They're both about five on the mark, and they know it. As Luke Green will get another turn, that makes his first few runs of the race, but there's always next time for Luke Green. Who knows, Star Wayne could still have a chance to make his world well repeat run in the second half of the season. Might not go to rest. Thanks for all your support, and Number is getting uh, behind the competition. He's going to get a speed runs, and that is going to do it. Stranded in last place. As the last finishers make their way towards the goal line. So, with that win, the Luck of the Irish, the Wingman, and Ramon Shorty, the Luck of the Irish are now 3 and 1. That's right, they're going to be resting with a victory heading into the second half of the season. And coming up, we got more as I got you for you, but first, have a look at this. Alright, Paul, who are we have next for base number 3? Race number 3 will feature the 2017 Tag Team Champions, Alm Heaton Jr. and Chris Knuckles, taking on Corey Sanchester and Avery Lager. So far, these two teams are 2 and 1. Whoever wins this one will go up to 3 and 1. The loser will have to sell at the 500 mark at 2 and 2. So let's hope for the very best. And this one will feature the Golden Challenge again, just like the last race. 
We always have the Golden Child whenever one of the child has 1900 or more points on all four on the main stats. Now you know what it is, so let's get to it. Let's pop this place! <laughs> And there goes the next two teams, pressing out the line. And let me tell you right now about our model with each and every week you're on Channel Racing 2018. And we've ever seen on Channel Racing in the past and beyond. There's one model we all trust when we own a rock. Anything can happen. That's right. Anything can happen in the Channel Racing universe. The model we always stick with each and every race. And right now, the two teams are making way towards the bridges. And who will get the only toss this time around? It's going to be number seven who gets it. <coughs> As he makes his way towards the bridges, point number two is getting left behind in the competition all the way in the back. Here, yeah, number one, both is better to take the water. Yep, yeah, there he goes. It's flying on hill. As U.S. number two in his face, we met by Chris Nagos, one half of our 2017 Tag Team Champions. And look at this. He. His partner, out here Jr., all over number 7, had both took a shortcut. Out here Jr. currently leading over number 7 of the Gordon Chow up in the front as they make their way towards the side five portion of the course. And who will give the next command spears? It's Corey Sanchester, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then. I think needs a lot more help than that. Right now, Adrian Jenner might need a meal go if he wants to catch up to the others in the hurry. He has to be not only out here Jr. and up in the very front, but also number seven of the Golden Child right behind him. He is going to need a lot of help he wants to get back in this one. But right now, let's head back to Corey Sanchester. Again, he's trying to catch up with the young competitors in a hurry. That should move up one or two places that time. Yep, no doubt about it. And by now, it looks like out here Jr. and number seven, all with Avery Regina the other team, are making way towards the top of the wall. And there they are. Who's gonna win? We'll find out soon enough. Next Spears blocks to Chris Benagos. That makes his second Spear to the base. And down goes number one. That's gonna cause the serious damage. He's going to shout, and Chris Benagos are gonna be busy crying on the wall. So it's Avery Jenna who wakes up and is now immediately with the next command Spears. And uh oh, here at number seven are both catching up to our current leader, Al here Jr. What's gonna happen here, folks? These three are heading for the home stretch, and it looks like Aaron Jenner's gonna pay off his fight ability to make the pass from Al here Jr. What a deal! As Corey Sanchez Jessica gets a first view of space, well, he is gonna be surprised because Aaron Jenner's gonna hold up Al here Jr. for a miracle victory! Aaron Jenner is Corey Sanchez for the victory over Al here Jr. and Chris Mango. What a comeback here, folks! As number one. We're out to the next two SPRs, leaving number two in the dust, all the way in the back of the pack. Poor number two, but we need his help, and he will be as he crosses out to speed bus for the race. But he's doing the last race right now. So, with that Mugo win, Avery Jenner now has eight wins out of 13 races he has participated so far this season. That's right, and he and Corey Sanchez are up to 3 and 1. What a deal. Back in the day, do not go away. All right, Paul, let's do one more race and then we'll have our Wednesday night taping break. That's right, to complete the first day of taping for race number four, we have our main champion, Smith Nason and Grand Melee, against Max Max Sandsberg and the Jersey Devil, John Stevenson. There's Logan in the lineup, so let's put the skills to the test and find out who will be fortunate enough to get the bed break. Good luck to the next two teams on the quest for victory, everyone's on the clock, and the fans are made too. So, we start the race! And Grand Melee is the best. That means Max Max Sandsburg and the Jersey Devil John Stearson will have a two-on-one advantage over Ben Stacen of the defending champions. Let's find out if they will pay off or not any only one. Right now, these three child are going to make their way towards the palm trees. Oh, Grand Melee better hurry up if he wants to get back against one after taking a rest. And now they're going to eat the food. And there goes Max Slack Sandsburg. He's going to have command lead. And look at that. He's going to have full control of the lead because the other two chow are dancing to the beat. Can anybody be able to catch up to Max Slack Sandsburg in a hurry? We'll find out soon enough. As the first of the star gets beat best is... Ben Stacen as he makes his way towards the bridges and a couple of silver children are going to rest all the way in the back including number seven so he is getting left behind in the competition over at the bridges get back in the pack as number one who also really needs help 
takes the US number two in his face and number eight taunts for more. Right now it is Gramoray, who now has the lead after taking a rest at the start race. He currently leads over John Stevenson, who sits in second place, and Max Dansberg, who is catching up to them in third place. Will sooner or I one will catch up to Grand Murray in a hurry? As the next Spears we may buy, Ben Stacey making his second speed bus in the race. He is currently moving number one in the dust for sixth place. Number A seems like he's getting left behind in the competition. But as we pass the one minute mark of this race, guess who really is getting left behind in the competition? It's number seven. He or number A won some speed runs. Which one will get it? It's number A who gets it. That will be pulling number seven all the way in the back in the dust. Meanwhile, Grand Moore is starting to get tailgated by the Jersey Devil John Stevenson. He had a little bit of room ahead on Max Max Hansburg, but he still has to get through Jersey Devil John Stevenson so that he can get another win on his scoreboard. Will he hold on for the bit three, or will John Stevenson make the miracle pass? We'll find out soon enough. Next PS belongs to number seven. He finally gets help. Now battling with number one for survival all the way in the back attack. The Jersey Devil John Stevenson and Glenn Murray are making way towards on stretch and now let the fire all the way. And the Jersey Devil John Stevenson with the next command PS. Well, you got all about that one. I think that might be good enough to make the pass at the home stretch. We'll soon know as the two child make their way towards all stretch as the next PS we made by Ben Stacey making his first speed burst of the base. But I think the Jersey Devil John Stevenson is gonna win this one, yep. Yeah? Just zero John Stevenson is going to let Max like Sandsbury towards an easy midway, which means both of these jumps will improve above 540 spring half of the season. As Ben Stevenson takes back to Max Spears, the Just zero John Stevenson wins the battle over Grandma. He lifts Max like Sandsbury towards the midway. John and Max get the midway this month, and poor number one has no hope for surviving whatsoever. And number seven can just forget about the space as the race. Comes to a close. Alright, so with that speed the Jersey Devil John Stevenson lifts Max Max Hansburg towards the victory over the champs. That's right. There are 7 and 6 right now for each of those beggars, and we'll be right back for the next day of taping out the Wii Hill Wife and Nets. Alright, time for the next race, Paul. Next up, we have the classic go getters, Antonio Bennett and Chris Schneider, the Fall Tide Wizard, tying up with the next generation superstar. Battling against Derek to play and Joe Raffery. Last time they couldn't handle the heat of the defending champions, but will they win this month? We're about to find out right now. Please start the race! Alright, let's see what happens in this space as the two teams make their way towards the rainbow path and Derek to play is going to rest. So he's going to be right behind on the competition in the rainbow path. And it looks like Joe Malfrey seems like he's pausing for more, yep. So the classic Ogres will have full control of this match, but which one will really have control of the lead? We're about to find out right now. It's going to be Chris Schneider who have control of the lead, because Antonio Bennett is dancing to the beat. But Chris Schneider will have a commanding lead for the classic Ogres over the other team, as the first superstar gets beat first, as Chris Schneider makes his way towards the water is... Number 7! Who wakes up for his nap and now battling for to stay alive in the game. Why not the other team, Derek to play and Joe Rafferty decide to take the push so they're going to need a lot of catching up to do in the early one. They don't want to lose to the Classic go -getters. The Classic go are a pretty good team even though they didn't win any tag team championships yet. Anyway, it is Joe Rafferty who has Spears number 2 in his face. And there he goes! That's Spears helping him fly over the bridges! And uh oh, now he's catching up to Chris Schneider of the Classic Go Getters. Well, Antonio Bennett is also catching up to his party in a hurry. What's gonna happen? Well, anyway, let's head back to number 7, and he gets his second speed bust out of the base. And right now, he is leaving the most 1 and 8 in the dust, all the way in the back of the pack. As we pass the 1 minute mark of this race, and it's gonna be number 1 who gets the next command speed bust out of the 2. Try to lead number 8 in the dust. Right now, let's head back up to the front. And right now it is Chris Schneider who is in the lead, following a close second by the next generation superstar, Antonio Bennett. And who will get the next command speed us? It is Derek to play, that's who. And down goes Joe Raffrey, that's what causes serious damage. Right now it looks like numbers 1 and 8 up in the back 
are getting left behind in the competition all on the way in the back. Number 7 seems like he's also left behind for sure. But right now let's worry about number 1 and 8. Which one of them will get the next command speedrunners? I think it's going to be number 1 gets it. Yep, number 1 got it. That makes his second speedrunner's race. And now he can lead number 8 in the dust. Meanwhile, our two teams seems like they're inching closer and closer. What's going to happen? Who's going to come up on top? We'll find out soon enough. Back to number one. He was pausing for a moment, but now he regains control over Deal Life over number eight. Wow, poor number eight is getting left behind after number one took back to back speedruns. Who will get the next one? It is going to be there to play, making his second speedruns. But I do believe the classical Guinness are going to celebrate an easy victory. Yep, they're doing a pretty good job erasing last month's loss. And now they're going to get a win this month. Over Daddy to play and Joe Raffrey. As Antonio Bay takes the next B runs, the classic go getters, Antonio Bay and Chris Schneider are our winners. So now they jump to 3 and 1. They're at the 750 mark after 4 months. Well done by the classic go getters. Number 8 has no hope for surviving whatsoever. And so it's number 7. So the classic go getters prevail. That's why 3 and 1, they have a solid first half. What will the second half bring for the classical guests? We'll soon know. Back in the bid, do not go away! Okay then, we're almost halfway for our mid-season finale of Challenge in 2018. And now, who do we have here? Well, Brandon, from race number 6, we have the Steel Drive. Alvin here, Senior, and his young brother, Danielle Heenan, against the fastest brother of this half, Raymond Hill and his partner, Michael Creighton. Raymond Hill and Michael Creighton managed to prevail over their opponents last month. And it's funny that Raymond Hill was actually upset for a third time last week. Million fans were shocked to see him lose. But this time he should be able to get it. Last time he will get his 10th win of the season this time. Good luck to the two teams and please start the race. So, after last week's tough loss, and I'm just too excited about the rest, so they're going to be left behind the competition. After last week's tough loss by upset by someone, Raymond Hill gets a second chance to secure his 10th win of his 2018 Child Racing season. And he's off and running, he's eating fruit, and there we go. Now as much as you free, they're eating fruit, and there we go. Right now it's Daniel Heaton and Michael Hayden who will be battling, and Daniel Heaton is the rest. That means it's better be a lot of catching up to do when he wakes up from his nap. As the first superstar to get speed bus is in fact Daniel Heater of the Steel Drive. His strategy worked and now he's heading for the water. But guess who took a shortcut? It's Michael Clayton, not Sue. But it's Raymond Hill's partner, so he'll be able to get his 10th win easily since his partner Michael Clayton reached the top of the hill with a shortcut. Anyway, down here we got the first speed runners, and in fact, Alvin Heenan Sr. gets speed runners number two. But it will be a mere goal for either one to catch up to both Michael Creighton and Maywan here in a hurry. And let's find out who will get the next command speed runners, and that next speed runners we made by number eight. And look at that, number seven passes for more, and so is number eight. Right now, let's watch our current leader, Michael Creighton. He is leading over his partner, Maywan Hill. But Raymond Hill is in tag team format, so he'll be able to get his tap win easily. Because his partner is safely in the lead. Who got the next command speed bus? It is Daniel Heater. That's who that makes his second speed bus race. And Dung goes out here and see him back in the bag. That's going to cost him damage. And right now, number one pauses from one. So he's going to be left behind in the competition all the way back. Ask number two. Well, the next command speed bus. Try to lead number eight in the dust for sixth place. Looks like Michael Quaker is going to help Raymond Hill get his 10th win of the season this time. He was upset it last week, but there's no way he's going to be upset it this week. Raymond Hill is going to get his 10th win easily. No doubt about it this time. Next year's belongs to Daniel Heaton. That makes his first people of the race, but there's always the second half of the season for both Daniel Heaton and Alvin Hill Sr. Of these steel drive. And number one is getting left behind trying to stay alive as Michael Clayton leads Raymond Hill to one of the easy victory. Well done by Michael and Raymond. As number one, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then, takes the next from SPS. Raymond Hill has done it. 
with Michael Quick defensively, Rayla Hill now has 10 wins of his 13 races he has to finish off the spring half of the 2018 season. He's doing a pretty good job keeping up with the cinema season, overcoming tough upsets, and proving that anything can happen in Chavez Universe. As Alvin Senior will close up the speed of the race, leading up to halftime. Now, we'll make his second speed of the race and take a look at the poor third shot battle for the life. Alright, Michael Crate and Rayla Hill are the victors. That's why right, and we'll present the second half of the races after we hear what from Ness. Alright, now moving on to the second half of the mid-season finale. That's why right, and we're starting off the second half with race number seven with the dazzling aces, John Miller and Van Henderson against Gary Coles and Buster Najabo. The dazzling aces did very well in the last month's tag team race, and they definitely deserve the win for sure. Let's hope they keep it up for this month as well. Good to the dazzling aces and to Gary Coles and Buster Najabo on their quest for victory. And let's have a challenge! Alright, there goes the next two teams busting down the line. And it looks like Buster the Jaw is with us. Which means the Dallas Aces will have a 2 on 1 advantage over Gary Coles for the moment. Right now, these three Chow are going to be heading towards the palm trees to bring down that coconut chief fruit. And it looks like one or two of the silver Chow are going to rest by the way, looks at it. And who's going to be battling for the lead? It looks like it's going to be Gary Coles when I come in the lead, with John Miller having the privilege to battle with Gary Coles for the lead up in front, or over number 8. And who got the first opening toss in the second half? It's going to be Fred Harrison on the Dazzling Aces. And guess who's dancing to the beat all the way back and getting left behind in the competition? It's number 7! He's getting left behind after dancing to the beat and going to rest for a while. So now he has a lot of catching up to do. He's better to take the water as speed was number two in this race. We may buy Gary Coles. And he's going to rest. And look at this. Fred Hudson has took a shortcut. Which means now he has a commanding lead. Since Gary Coles got to rest and he took a shortcut. Now he has a dominating lead for the Dazzling Aces. Over Gary Coles and come on. As we head back into Gary Coles. Who is battling with his partner busted the job for second place. And right now, John Miller is catching up to those two in a hurry. Right now, on the fourth, Sir Chow battling for a deal life. That's the past the one minute mark. With number two, seems like winning the battle of the deal life for a final cut morning. <coughs> As the next BS we made by John Miller of the National Aces. And he is cheering on Fat Hudson up to the very front. He is showing Fat Hudson good sportsmanship. In the support for the Dazzling Aces run to the Tag Team Championship for 2019. And who will get the next one? It is number 8, who's now catching up to number 2 for the lead over the 4th Sir Chow. Poor number 1 and poor number 7 really needed to get a lot of speed rest that they want to get back in this one. But it's John Miller, the Dazzling Aces, who got that next speed rest. That makes it his next speed rest race. His partner, Fat Harrison, should be gone in just a couple of moments from now. There he is, he's at the home stretch, flying towards the movie pool, and no one is going to catch up to him in a hurry. Next PS belongs to Buster Najabo. Well, and as always, next time for Buster Najabo, Fred Henderson is safely in a lead with no opponents to worry about. And there you have it, Fred Henderson lifts the dazzling answers for the midway. As number two, well, the next come as PS, that was enough to take the lead on the full sword job. And it looks like number seven taunts from went all the way back. And we have just enough time for one more speed bus of this race. And they will be made by number eight. Just barely. So with a dominating effort, the dazzling aces are now at three and one. That's why they only lost one one, one race. They're at three and one right now, 750. That's why it's only coming up, so stay tuned. And now, here's a fan favorite that is back for another month. That's why race number 8 will feature a rematch of last month's race, featuring the Go-Go's 2.0, Ricky Nelson and Rusty Instant with by Jackieton, and Tyler Phones and Chip Survey. Last year's race was an epic classic. We promise they will do it again. So, we're having an encore for this month. Let's see who will win this round of this amazing saga. We love to the two teams and please start the race. Now this is truly a, a, a one to remember. 
They really want an encore presentation. So the staff really does it once. And my not must say instantly when Jackie Chen is going to rest. That means he's going to be left behind in a competition all the way back. That means Tom Force and Chip Silver will have a 2 on 1 advantage. Boy, these fans really like those two teams. And now they get to see an encore mate. Well, anyway, Chip Silver is dancing to beat. And there goes Vicky Nelson and Tom Force. Battling once again after last month's heated rivalry. This is going to be a exciting one for round two this month. And it looks like these three chow are going to be heading for the water. As the first superstar I guess beat first is number one. Who desperately needs to catch up Mary now and then. Right now it's number eight who really needs some help. And he's going to rest. So he's going to be left behind in the competition all the way in the back in the back. Poor number eight is getting left behind. And who will get speedless number two of a special encore presentation of last month's race? It's going to be number two who gets it. Oh, it didn't have enough distance to fly over the bridge as well. Maybe next time. Right now, let's head over to the heat of rivalry that the fans love from last month. And it promised to be an exciting one. I knew this one should be an exciting one. And Ricky Nelson scored the best. That's the next PS we made by number eight. He finally gets the battle back past the one minute mark, but he's still way behind the competition. And this is why we're having an encore presentation. Tyler Falls and Musty Jackson on the Go Getters 2.0 are battling for the lead. Chip Survey scored the best again. As the next PS we made by number seven, who dominates over the fourth to a challenge in fifth place. Meanwhile, poor number A still really needs a speed bus. But I think he is going to be left behind in the competition for a while. Oh, and down goes number one for the count. That's what costs his damage. And now down goes number eight for the count. Wow, some of the child really struggling to get on their feet. Well, anyway, they're going to be left behind the competition for sure. Next PS belongs to Ricky Nelson on the Go Girls 2.0. His team better hurry up. Time of Force is always in home stretch. They don't want to get spoiled this time. They want to repeat the well played effort this month. Anyway, who will get next class be us? It's Rusty Instant Replay Jackie Ten. Trying to do it again for the Go Getters 2.0 after last month's incredible victory. And Time Force went a little too far in this computer. And Rusty Jackie Ten prevailed over Time Force and Chip Survey. They're going to do it again this month. What a deal! As number one takes the next to SPS, the Go Girls 2.0 is going to repeat the well played effort from last month's race. And now you have it. Rusty Instant Replay Jackie 10 lifts the Go Girls 2.0 towards the victory over Time Force and Chip Sully again. As number seven, it will close on SPS race. The Go Girls 2.0 have once again prevailed over Time Force and Chip Sully. That was a pure encore presentation for both of these teams. Well done. Yes, I applaud those two teams. Coming up, we'll set the final night of taping here in here in Cherry in 2018. But first, let's hear a word from this. Alright, coming up later on in the mid season finale, we got Ralph Dennis and Peter Foles going for the third and final tag team on the Mount Honors. That's why right, Brandon, in fact, the main event will feature the two remaining teams who are undefeated at 3-0. So the winner of the main event will improve to 4-0. That's coming up later on in the show. But now for race number 9, we have Kyle Richman and Bobby K against JJ Nehemiah and Ara Jones. Let's send them down back to the field again as we take a look at this lineup for this race. And here we go, the players are lined up ready to go. Is everyone ready here in the crowd today? Then without further ado, please start the race! Okay, there goes the next four superstars, pressing down the line. Next two tag teams, as a matter of fact. As they make their way towards the palm trees to bring down that coconut chip fruit. And the fans are on their feet, cheering on for all of our favorite superstars. And it looks like JJ Nehemiah is dancing to the beat. And there goes Bobby K. He is going to have command of the lead. And look at that. He is going to have control of the lead for the moment. 
as the first superstar against Big Bus is number 8. And now he dominates over the force to reach out early on in the race. And right now, Gaz is getting left behind, dancing to the B bag in the concrete. It's number 1, that's who. Looks like he needs a lot of help to stay in the game. Will he get a speed bus? Yes, he will. But I think he needs a lot more help than that. Don't you think? Anyway, by now it is Kyle Richman who is in the lead heading into the top of the hill. Going in second place, we have JJ Nima who is right behind him trying to catch up in a hurry. As we head back into number one. A little more help that time. And look at that. Oliver Jones to the rest, which means number one is going to leave Oliver Jones left behind in the dust. So Oliver Jones is going to need a couple of speed bus if he wants to get back in this one. And this is the first of them as we pass on one minute mark. And number one pauses for a moment trying to get some attention here. Back up in front, Kyle Richman is safely in the lead ahead of JJ Nehemiah. And who will get the next one? Let's find out. It is going to be the Bobby Mina. Bobby K, who gets the next command speed as his partner. Meanwhile, Armour Jones and number one are fighting for dear life all the way in the back of the pack. Number seven seems like he's also left behind the, of the others in a hurry. But back to Bobby K, the Bobby Mina. Of course, his team is in the lead with Kyle Richman safely in first place ahead of JJ Nima. Can JJ Nima make a statement or will Kyle Richman hold on? We'll find out when they get to the whole stretch later on in the race. Next BS belongs to Oliver Jones. That makes it against Peebles for the race, but I highly doubt he will get any wins for the entire season, don't you think? Well, at least it's leaving number one in the dust. But I think it's going to be one win for one more week. And who get the next one is number seven. And look at that. He doesn't need to go to rest. The others do. But number seven doesn't go to rest. Now he has to lead over the fourth third child. And back in front, Kyle Richman has a little bit of room for one more. of JJ Nehemiah. JJ won't have enough distance to catch up to Kyle Richman in time. As number two takes the next speed bus. Kyle Richman lifts Bobby Kane towards the victory over JJ and Ann Arbor. Number one has no hope for surviving whatsoever as he went a little too far at the home stretch. As number two, who leaves number one in deal life, is fed to close this one out with that debug speed bus by Will said, Yep, yep, number one has no hope for surviving whatsoever at all. And that's gonna do it. So Kyle Richman and Bobby K emerge victorious. That's why another win closer towards the 2019 playoff. And there's more time coming up, do not go away. And next up we have what? Race number 10 will feature the Militators, Howard and Dave Miller, against Jeff Nellis and Frank Fanatal. They haven't been doing a lot of teamwork lately, but one of them should be able to get a win. One of them will approve the 500 win after the end of this half of the season. Let's find out who would be that winner of this race. Everyone's on the clock, and we start the race! Here we go! And Jeff Nellis is going to rest. And so is Howard Miller. That means Dave Miller and Frank Van Tower will have the opening edge. But we'll soon know which one of them will pay off for that in the only one. <coughs> right now, Dave and Frank are making way towards the palm trees. And now they're going to eat the food. And there they go. Best thing down the line. Which one of them will give me up a hand later on in the race? We'll find out soon enough. As the first superstar against Big Bus is number two, who leans over the four silver child at the bridges, and he is gonna Right now, how Miller is getting left behind the competition, but number seven is way behind in the competition, right behind him. As Big Bus number two in this race will be made by Frank Von Tomo. That's who. Now I'm trying to lean over second place in the camp one. Dave Miller has a commanding lead over Frank Vontal heading into the top of the wall. He is having a huge lead for the Miller trainers ahead of him as we head back into Frank Vontal, who's safely in second place ahead of his partner Jeff Nellis. By now, how Miller is battling with a couple of silver in the back, 
and number one is catching up to them in a hurry in last place. We passed the one minute mark in the side race. <coughs> How many of us experiencing traffic with the silver chow? And number eight passes for number one, and number seven passes for number one, as the next BS we made by. How Miller are the Miller Traders. Meanwhile, his partner Dave Miller is safely in, in the lead, heading into the top of the wall. Can can either one of their opponents be able to catch up to Dave Miller in a hurry? We will find out soon enough. Dave Miller is at 500 as of right now, but I think he should get an easy win. Next BS belongs to number two. That makes it second speed bonus of the race, and he dominates over the four silver chow in four place by way of How Miller. <coughs> Right now, I think one of these chow in the back, we need to get speed bus, and that next speed bus went me by number seven, number eight, number seven went down for the count, and they know what's going to us. That means Jeff now has rocked the privilege of battling with him for the lead, and he's with us, which means Frank Brown Tower will have the privilege of battling with Damo for the lead, as Jeff now is. We'll get the next coming SBS catching up to Frank Brown Tower and Damo up in the front. But I think Dave Miller's going to lift the Miller trainers to the 500 mark at the end of this half of the season. Which we Dave Miller will have a total of 7 wins heading into halftime of this 2018 season. <coughs> As number 8 takes the next command speed mask. And number 7 fights with your life all the way in the back. You can tell me what up for the Miller trainers. As Dave Miller comes in first place behind the pack. And we have just enough time for one more speed bus in this race, and we may buy number one, who leads number seven and eight in the dots. And that is going to do it. So, after a dominating effort by Dave Miller, the Miller trainers are at 500. That's right, they finished the first half at two wins and two losses. And it's more time coming out, we're just getting started. Here in San Diego, California, for our midseason finale of Chop Racing 2018. We're almost at our exciting main event for our new season finale, the first let's have race number 11. That's right, Brad, and for race number 11, we have the 2014 Tag Team Chariots, Jason Hill and Nick Gimmick against Casey Raymondson, and the fastest swimmer of the league, and Carl Tanner. Let's see which one of them will walk away with a W to wrap up the spring half of the 64 season of Chariots. That's the two two teams, and let's mark this place! Alright, there goes the next two teams pressing down the line as the predecessor to the main event for our week 13th mid-season finale here on the 64th season of Chelsea 2018. And the fans here in San Diego, California are already feeling the summer spirit kicking off the summer season for 2018. And right now the two teams are going to eat the palm trees and now they're going to go eat the fruit. And there goes Jason Hill with Carl Tanner right on his tail in second place, or third place, battling with number two for second place. As the first superstar against beat us is the gimmick. And it's fun that Jason Hill is heading for the one and trying to maintain some ground in the early run. Jason Hill is swimming in the water and guess who's getting speed as number two? It's number one, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then. Now he is heading for the one, trying to maintain some ground in the early run. Nick Gimmick and Carl Tanner are battling over at the bridges, with Casey Raymondson not too far behind. As number two, who desperately needs to catch up to every now and then, takes an expanse because he's getting left behind competition. Right now, though, it is number eight, who is way, way behind in the competition all the way in the back. We're approaching one minute mark, and I do believe he's going to need a couple of speed bus if he wants to get back in this one for sure. And this is one of them, but I think that's all he's going to get for a while. Right now, Jason Hill has a commanding lead over Carl Tanner heading into the Sapphire portion of the course. Jason Hill is approaching the Sapphire portion of the course, where they check a path that leads in up to the wall. As the next viewers we made by, the gimmick that makes the sex viewers race try that's way to catch up on the ground. But look at poor number 8. He really needs a lot more spears than that. He doesn't want to get left behind in the competition all the way in the back of the pack. But I don't think that's going to happen at all. And Casey Mayweather says, well, that means he'll be left behind when the other's in the hood. That means he needs a couple of speed bus if he wants to get back in this one. And this is one of them. Right now, Jason Hill has a commanding lead over number one and number seven. There he is. Jason Hill is at the top of the wall. And he's going to rest. 
That means number one will have the privilege of catching up to him in a hurry. Number one is approaching Tom Wall. He'll have a little bit of catching up to do, I hope. And he will be, because he doesn't need to go fast. And he takes the next command speed Now he is catching up to Jason Hill. Uh oh. Look out, Jason Hill. Number one is right on his tail. He is trying to make a miracle comeback. After being left behind at the start of the race. And he prevails over Jason Hill. Number one made all the way to first place and being left behind in competition. What a hell. As Nick Gimmick. We'll get another turn making his first viewers race, but I think Jason Casey Marvin should be on Mega Miyoko comeback. Just barely, yep. As Nick Gimmick takes back Max Pierce, Casey May Marvin prevails a Miyoko comeback over number one and Jason Hill. What a deal! Casey May Marvin finally paid off his own extreme strategy for once, and he means it. That's why right. congratulations to Casey May Marvin and Carl Town, a job well done. We'll present a main event in just a few moments, but first, let's hear what from this. All right, fans of San Diego, California, summer is upon us, so let's present our mid-season finale's main event. Yeah, the fans are all ready to go, so let's get to it. For our mid-season finale's main event for week 15, we have our returning champions, Ralph Dennis and Peter Falls, taking on the 2016 Mighty Stars champion, Jack Samuel and Zach Orson. As you know, both of these teams are 3-0 heading into this month's action, so whoever wins this race will improve to 4-0 and will be the only undefeated team left in contention. This should be an exciting one, and the fans are pumped up ready to go. And this week's main event is presented by our executive power partner, Dunkin' Donuts. So far this season, Dunkin' Donuts has, uh, has donated about $1.7 million towards their charities. We thank you, Dunkin' Donuts, for all your support, and we hope to do this again later on for the second half of the season. Thank you very much from all of us here on Chat Racing. So, all the fans of San Diego ready to go? That's why right, Paul is ready to go and I'm ready to go, so without further ado, let's have a challenge! Alright, there goes the two teams for our last main event of this half of Chow Racing 2018. And number one is going to rest out, he will be left behind in the crowd. And number eight taunts for more before he heads to the pause race. The fans of San Diego are on their feet for those two main event teams of our mid-season finale. And right now both teams are eating the fruit. And there goes Joshua Samuel. He's going to have command lead with Peter Falls right on his tail in second place right behind him. And Zach Orson wins the opening toss for week 13's main event. Presented by executive pop on the Dunkin' Donuts. On a beautiful summer sunny day on a mid-season finale of Chow Racing 2018. And right now number 8 is getting left behind on the competition all the way back. And who's getting speed mess number 2? It's going to be Ralph Dennis as to trying to get the third and final tag team of the on this. Right now, it is Joshua Samuel who dominates over the computer with of Peter Falls heading into the top of the hill. Joshua Samuel is trying his best to maintain a huge lead ahead of Peter Falls. As the next speed mess we made by number 7, who is way behind the competition on the way to back. He's still in last place, just barely behind numbers 1 7. Ralph Dennis also trying his best to stay alive in the game. But he, I know he's doing his best to cheer on Peter Falls as he tries to make a statement in the only one. We passed the one minute mark, and who got the next command to be us? It's number 8, that's who, who's trying to hold on number 1 for 6th place. And look at this! Joshua Samuel is with us, which means Peter Falls will have the privilege of catching up to him. They will have the privilege to battle with Joshua Samuel for the lead. And Zach Olsen gets another turn, and he's going to rest. Well, that makes his second speed bus, amazing, but he's going to rest. By now, it is number one, who's getting left behind in the competition all the way in the back. He's going to need a couple of speed buzz if he wants to get back in this one. He gets one of them, but I think that's all he's going to get for a while. Meanwhile, Peter Falls is trying his best to make a miracle comeback for what Joshua Samuel, 2016 Wild Stars champion. Joshua and Peter making way towards the waterfall. And in fact, it is Peter Falls who have the next command speed us. Oh boy, he's trying to make a pass 
over Joshua Samoy, Tito and Joshua are both heading to the home stretch, and it looks like by just a few feet, it looks like Peter Falls is going to retain the tag team of Mount Honors with Mount Dennis for the third and final month. So, as number 8 takes his second speed month of the race, Peter Falls and Mount Dennis are going to be a tag team of the month for the third and final month in a row. And there you have it. Peter Falls holds on Joshua Samoy to win Mount Dennis to a third and final tag team of Mount Honors. Well done. As number one, who definitely is in that year, takes his second three months race. He is trying to leave Ralph Dennis and us, but Ralph Dennis can celebrate nevertheless. He gets the third and final tag team of honors, and Ralph Dennis will have the next three SBS trying to stay out of the game. That means we'll have two new teams on our next edition of Cherry in 2018 in a tag team format, possibly in September. Yep. So until then, Ralph Dennis and Peter Force can celebrate. That's right, Paul. They are now at 4-0, and they're the only undefeated team left in the contention of the 24 tag teams you are jelly in 2018. Good job. Back in the bid. Do not go away. Alright, what a week we have here on our Miss East Finale in San Diego, California. I would like to thank all of our fans and staff for being with us for our first 13 weeks of the 64th season of Channel 18 2018 and especially to all of our sponsors who sponsor our program including our executive power partner Duncan Norris $1,690,000 to be exact towards their charities so give yourself a big round of applause for all your support Well everybody it's officially summer and that is it for week 13 of our Channel 18 2018 so I hope you have a great summer, and we hope you fans at home do the same thing to us. Until then, this is Bad Track signing off. We'll see you in the fall for more exciting Charlie's Engine. Until then, keep on smiling, have a great summer vacation, and so long everybody! This is Paul Sankamore speaking. Thank you for joining us for our mid-season finale. Join us in August or September for the remainder of our 64th season of Jamie Singh 2018. See you then!